If tomorrow is a big test for the government, Thursday will be the day we get an instant public reaction to the Butler report. Two by-elections, one in Birmingham, the other in Leicester South. The Leicester constituency was among the safest of all Labour seats at the last election. But the revelations about the road to war, the disaffection of some traditional Labour voters and the anger felt by many Muslims towards government policy means that no seat can now be guaranteed. David Grossman reports from Leicester. Hi. It's a wonder anyone can get anything done in Leicester South at the moment. The place is full of men in suits, bothering people at work. I don't pretend to be in the phone. They all, yes, I know they all. Asking annoying questions. What's your favourite? Do you have a radio or radio station? And scaring the children. That's right, yeah. So we've got some very strong things to say about that. Leicester South already has its place in history. 163 years ago this month, a group of travellers left here for Loughborough. They were met at the other end by a brass band and a ham sandwich, all included in the one shilling price of the excursion. It was the world's first package tour, organised by a local entrepreneur, one Thomas Cook. Things, of course, have changed since Thomas Cook's time. These days, Leicester South is a prime destination. More or less every train that arrives here, it seems, another senior party figure steps out, eager to campaign on the streets of this constituency. They'll all tell you it's because they confidently expect to win, but the real reason is that they fear losing badly, because this close to a general election, none of the parties can risk getting a real hiding in these by-elections. Good afternoon, everybody. Charles Kennedy, eight visits and counting, would probably save money buying a season ticket. These retirement home residents unaware that he and the Lib Dem candidate, Panjit Gill, are coming to work their day room. Despite finishing third here at the last election, it feels like the Lib Dems are defending the seat. One reason is that by-elections are a bit of a speciality, so the pressure is on their campaign staff to do well. Another reason is that the Lib Dems took control of Leicester City Council from Labour last year, so much of the campaign is on their record. This is almost a unique experience for the Liberal Democrats to be the front runner from the start. They were expected to do well from the very time that the by election was uh, on the horizon. And uh, for once, you've got the party who are the purveyors of pavement politics are now being damaged by pavement politics because they uh, have those problems with the local council and a great deal of campaigning against the decisions of the local council. So the Lib Liberal Democrats are vulnerable in a territory where they're normally very, very strong. One big local issue is bus passes. The Liberal Democrat Council restricted concessionary travel for the elderly only to reverse the plan in the face of protest. This being a by-election, though, they're trying to get the credit for safeguarding the bus passes that, in fact, only they were threatening. The bus pass issue is indicative of what was a difficult financial inheritance for the party locally. That means that you do have to take some difficult choices. There's no two ways about it. But I think if you take the time to explain to people why you're doing things, I think they can respect you. You can't uh, be popular on every single issue in politics. It's just not a, a gift that's given to any of us. But I think you've got to be out there sincerely putting your case across. That's not quite how their opponents see things. The message behind this George Bush punch bag in the Lib Dem HQ may be clear enough, but the other parties accuse the Liberal Democrats of double dealing, of sending out contradictory messages to different audiences. Simon Hughes knows all about winning by-elections. He took Bermondsey in 1983 and has held on to it ever since. He says there's nothing wrong with tailoring a message. Of course, if, for example, women in Leicester living on their own may have issues that are particular to women, to do with safety and so on, that are not the same as a very large family where that hasn't been an issue. Old people will have a special set of concerns about travel, about housing, about safety. Uh, the Muslim community will have a separate set of concerns. So yes, of course it's right. If you're going to try to win the voters, it's over treating them all as if they're a herd of sheep. You have to treat them respectfully and differently. As if poor Thomas hasn't got enough on his plate. Now he's not only got a bang on the head, but the health secretary's getting on his case. That other chap positioning himself centre frame is Labour's candidate, Peter Salisbury. Labour want to concentrate on improvements to public services in this by-election, like this new children's casualty unit at Leicester Royal Infirmary, as well, of course, as trying to give the Lib Dems a few bruises on council cuts. One issue they can't escape, though, is the war in Iraq. 
Now, I think the Labour Party would be very mistaken if it underestimated the effect of the war, the continuing effect on of the war on public opinion in this area and more generally. I think minds have been changed by this war overnight. Long, long held loyalties have been transformed by this war. And even though the news might be perhaps slightly more positive, it's the attitudes of the, the attitude towards the Labour Party which has been changed, I, I would say, in many cases irrevocably. <laughs> Fighting for. Labour may be hoping that the war is fading as an issue, but it's hard to ignore this lot driving around Leicester. George Galloway was expelled from the Labour Party. He's here helping the respect candidate. She's Yvonne Ridley, a Daily Express journalist who was captured by the Taliban and has since converted to Islam. Labour would say that the war is a very different issue than it was, say, at the European elections because they've had the handover in Iraq. Is that the sense that you're getting on the doorstep? Well, I know a week's a long time in politics, but it's not long enough to forget about a war and a blunder and a crime as big as Iraq. And it's been only three weeks since the European elections and Labour returned the worst election result in their entire political history. So there's very unlikely uh, it's very unlikely that there's been any kind of swing to Tony Blair in the last three weeks, all because of some handover, which is no handover at all. Labour calls its candidate Mr Lester. Peter Salisbury should know the city well. He ran the council for 17 years until uh, um, the Lib Dems took his seat. Their attack on him is over his record on the council, over closures of schools and other facilities. What Mr Lester doesn't advertise on any of his posters is that he has a knighthood, so he's not technically Mr Anything. What he does emphasise, though, is his anti-war credentials. The first thing you say about your candidate, anti-war, Peter Salisbury. Oh, yes, well, it's he true. was. I was. Are you pleased with that? Are you proud of that? Well, I, this is a, a free society in which we have parliamentarians who, on these occasions, were given free votes. So it's perfectly... Uh, respectable for a candidate to make his view known in that. Is he giving up his knife? We wouldn't know he was a sir unless we knew he was a sir. Well, he's a, he's, he's a sir and he, he received the honour for his services to the local community here in Leicester. So where why doesn't he, he show it off? Why doesn't he show it off? Because he has a degree of modesty. But whilst ignoring their man's knighthood, Labour's trying to portray their opponent in the Tories as a bit of a toff. Hi, I'm Chris. I'm the candidate. Hi, how are you? Chris Heaton Harris may have two surnames, but certainly doesn't come across as a blue blood. This is the last minute. I have never seen Chris in a top hat. I've known him for a very long while. I've never seen a top hat being worn. And, uh, you know, he's a person who's been in business for a long while. He's worked through the nights uh, in wholesale fruit and vegetables. This is a, a person who can hardly be described as a top. Uh, and, uh, and I think it really is a laugh for the Labour Party to be doing that. I, I suppose they've forgotten that new Labour is all meant to be about uh, granita restaurants and uh, spaghetti al pomodoro. Uh, they're going back to uh, mushy peas, but they've forgotten that actually they're something else now. So is the Labour Party really worried in Leicester South? Well, party workers do seem a bit edgy, and look who's turned up to lend his support. Labour's unofficial chief election strategist, Peter Mandelson. Are you here as a, just an MP today or a strategist? Here is a Labour MP supporting a first-rate Labour candidate. Any, any tricks to t show them here in the local campaign? We're not going to win this seat by playing tricks. We're going to win this seat by telling the truth about Labour government policies, what's been achieved and delivered uh, for Leicester, but also telling the truth about the Tories and the investment they'll put out of the fight against crime and also tell the truth about the Lib Dems. The Conservatives are having to relearn how to fight by-elections. At Brent East, they were happy to keep a low profile, giving the Lib Dem candidate there a clear run at the seat. The Tory candidate in Brent East admitted she was only running in the hope of getting a winnable seat next time. There's a different feel, though, about the Tory campaign at Leicester South. The party's bussing up MPs to join the fight every day. The whole operation is run by the Conservatives' chief whip. Uh, the battle bus has arrived in Birmingham. He's actually moved his office to the constituency for the duration. He knows that with a general election perhaps only nine months away, coming a dismal third here would be extremely damaging. I think the lesson I've learned as, as chief whip, when I thought I would come here and do this, I thought it would be more symbolic that all oh, chief whips in Leicester and party colleagues will say, oh, well, if he's in Leicester, he must be taking it seriously. It's become more than symbolic. We've learned so much on the ground. 
I can now send messages back to colleagues telling them that genuinely how it's going. I could sit in London and say, please go up to Birmingham and Leicester, but being here, we can phone them up and say, look, we've been out here, you know, the curries are good as well, this is the reception we're getting, it's worthwhile coming. And that, I think, has quadrupled the number of colleagues who are coming to work. And they're enjoying it. The Conservatives are throwing resources at the contest. They've even drafted in their crack balloon display team to give the party the helium of publicity. And Michael Howard has made five visits. So it's understandable if he can't always remember what he's supposed to be doing. This is a great effort. It shows that the Conservative Party is absolutely back in business yeah. And, yeah. and back in the business of winning. Yeah. Are they really, though, that confident of winning? One Conservative front bencher admitted privately that the Tories don't expect to take the seat. Current thinking in the party is that they don't actually mind if Labour wins. The real aim is stopping the Lib Dems getting another by-election victory. There's an awful lot at stake for the Conservatives. Obviously, the elections, the uh, European elections, were disappointing for complex reasons, but they couldn't have taken too much uh, joy from the council elections either. So this is uh, almost a relaunch already of Michael Howard as leader. It's an electoral test which he can't fail. And that means, I would think, that if he doesn't come a decent second in this constituency, questions might be asked already about his leadership. The choir practising at St Philip's Church in Leicester South. Today they have a bit of competition. Next door, in the church hall, many of the candidates are there answering questions from a packed public meeting. Leicester South has one of the highest proportions of voters from ethnic minorities of any seat in the country, and the most heated discussion is on the war. The war in Iraq was wrong. Totally wrong. You can't get much clearer than that. Can Labour hang on? Will the Lib Dems lose votes to other anti-war candidates? And can the Tories do enough? One thing we can say for certain is next week, the choir won't have to practice over the sound of discord. David Grossman, and you can now see the full list of the 11 candidates in the Leicester South by-election, which will be held on Thursday.